were well attacked by the currency traders. We had to learn what is currency trading, what is banking, how is money used. All these things you have to know before you can make a decision to apply currency and exchange control. If you don't understand, you suddenly apply exchange control, the country can become bankrupt. But you, because you, you have basic education, of course, as a politician, I didn't need to have any education at all, but fortunately for me, and fortunately for you, I was educated. <laughs> and I became a doctor. A doctor approaches his problem in a certain way. If somebody who is sick comes to see him and wants him to treat, first thing he does is he wants to ask, what, is, what are you suffering from? I mean, can you tell a person has headache by, just by looking at him? No. You have to ask him, what are you, what are you suffering from? Oh, headache lah. Oh, stomach ache. Then you know, his problem is about his stomach or his head. And then you do, you ask him questions about the history, the background, etc. After that, you do a physical examination, use your stethoscope, put your hands on, on his body and feel, and you tap his chest and all kinds of things you do physically. And then you send him for clinical, for uh, examination with all kinds of equipments, that they have now, they have CRT, they have all kinds of things. And then after all the data comes in, then you decide what is the disease, and you identify the disease, maybe two or three diseases. Out of the two or three, which one do you think is the most likely one? And having decided what is the most likely disease, you diagnose the person. Now you have to decide what kind of medicine to give. So this is the very methodical way of dealing with a problem. And in politics, it's the same. If you don't know what the problem is, you will never be able to tackle it. So you must have knowledge, and you must know how to approach the problem, and then you get the right perspective, and you are able to find a solution, sometimes right, sometimes wrong. With regard to reducing this, uh, although I am chancellor, they haven't. They, they say I am not an executive chancellor. I applied the other day to become an executive chancellor, <laughs> but they say no, no, no. The executive part is going to be done by by the vice chancellor, young, lower uh, in rank from me. But he has the power. I don't have the power, so I will tell him. I will tell him, and I hope. He will consider. And uh, that ap applies also to question number three. With regard to whether you should go into business or you should work for somebody, I would suggest that if you can, work for somebody first to gain experience, to gain knowledge. Then think of going into business. Knowing, of course, that going into business will need Capital, you don't have the capital. But if you intend to go into business, please save some money, don't spend everything. When you are working, save some money because it's good if you can tell the bank, I have a certain amount of money, I want to borrow 90% for my business. Then probably the bank will lend you money. But if you have nothing, you go to the bank, I have nothing. Please lend me a million dollars or a hundred million dollars because I have this great project. I'm going to uh, process uh, uh, palm oil or uh, this have a uh, what uh, refinery for which will cost me a hundred million or two hundred million dollars. Can you please lend me one hundred million dollars or two hundred million dollars? You think the bank is going to give it to you? No. Otherwise, all of you can go and borrow. <laughs> so before you try to go into business, first acquire some knowledge by working, and then go into a small business which is within your competence. As much as possible, use your own capital, borrow as little as possible, 
and then learn from the small first uh, attempt at business to grow your business. If you try to make too big a step across a drain, you are likely to fall in, in between. So that's my advice for whatever it is worth. Yes, okay. Only on this side, no? Yes. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it's working. Please speak. This might, okay. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Muhammad Faris bin Shuhaimi, second year first semester student from Petroleum Engineering Department as well as representative from MPP UTP. So, uh, Tun, as UTP Chancellor, I believe you have received many feedbacks regarding on the UTP graduates' quality. So, uh, based on the feedbacks that you received, did the feedbacks uh, meet your expectation uh, on the UTP graduates? as the graduates in the 21st century. Okay, uh, then my second question. John F. Kennedy once said, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. So uh, I, want to, I want to talk about uh, healthy political awareness. So can you give your opinion about the relationship between healthy political awareness and how this healthy political awareness can contribute or can inculcate uh, the well-rounded graduates in order to face the obstacles and all the challenges in the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have followed the progress of uh, UTP and generally I'm satisfied with the progress that is made particularly with regard to the employability of the students. Most students, most graduates from UTP find jobs very quickly. This is simply because that field of knowledge that they have chosen is the field that is most desired by the, uh, the country like ours, where we try to move into industry. So, I would like to say that the reports have been quite good, not only from UTP sources, but from other sources as well, because I don't always believe uh, UTP. <laughs> I ask other people and, you know, the grading and all that. But uh, there's one thing that uh, I feel I need stress, that whereas you have the knowledge, and this knowledge enables you to get a job. But working needs a certain character, a certain understanding of the value system, of the culture, of the place where you work. Now, if you don't equip yourself with that culture, you may be employed, but you may not perform well, you may not be promoted, or worse still, you may even have to leave the organization. So that, I think, uh, is something I've urged all universities to teach their students the right value system that they must have. For example, just simple thing like working hard. You have to work hard. You have to work, even if it is overtime work. Secondly, you have to be honest. If there is temptation, well, I can, you know, take this thing without people knowing. Always remember there's someone up there looking at you. So don't do anything that is wrong. Do what is right. Have good values. Be honest. Have, be trustworthy. Amana is very important. So apart from the knowledge that you have, you must go into your business or get employed and give the service that is expected of you as a person who has high value, who respects his, himself and his employer. So by and large, I would say that 
UTP has done quite well, considering that it's relatively a small and young university. Now, with, with regard to this uh, Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, he died, you know. He was shot 